Hey everybody, welcome to The Coding Zoo. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane and our goal at Coding Zoo is to help others learn how to program. In today's lesson, we are going to cover the new Java 9 modules feature. So if you're not familiar with the Java project structure and Java 9 modules, stick around, we're gonna jump right in. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. In a previous video, I covered Java structures, Java packages and classes. If you haven't seen that video, it probably will have more details on those structures. I'll put a link to it up here. So we are gonna cover Java modules today. Before we do so though, I need to do kind of a recap of the Java project structure, the Java packages and, and classes. Uh, the modules kind of fit into that subject. So for people who aren't familiar with that, we're going to do a quick recap on Java project, Java packages and, and class structures, and then we're going to jump into what's different with having the Java modules that came out with Java 9. So if you look down below, you should see some chapters. The first chapter, we're going to cover Java coding structure, Java project structure rather, and then the next chapter, you'll see Java modules. So if you're familiar with pro uh, the project structure and the package structure, and what that, uh, why that's in place, then you could skip ahead if you want to just jump right to the module part. If you're, if you're not sure you completely know the insides and outs of that, it's probably good to do a recap of packages and the structure visibility. If you don't understand visibility, you, you don't need to understand this. So, hey, let's go ahead and jump in. Let's cover some Java modules. When working with Java code, the first thing you do is to use an IDE, an integrated development environment, to create a Java project. That Java project will usually have folders in it, such as a source folder, an SRC folder. Underneath that source folder, you might have subfolders, such as main and test. This is usually found in a Maven Java project. Main is where you would keep your production code, and test is where, well, you would keep your test code. Underneath main, there would be a resource and Java folder. When working with Java code, code is usually grouped into various contexts with a package, a Java package. So underneath the Java folder, I might create the package com.thecodingzoo. This package represents a namespace with meaning. In this case, the codingzoo.com is reversed into com.thecodingzoo. This is a common practice to represent your organization. This package may contain many other sub-packages to represent different business contexts or subjects within my organization. For example, I may have a program that represents a bookstore. I might have the sub-package bookstore under the com.thecodingzoo package. Now, packages can have sub-packages to represent multiple contexts and sub-contexts, but ultimately, their purpose is to hold Java code. That would be done with a Java class. For example, I might have a class under the bookstore package called Books. A Java class is an entity where you would write Java code. It will usually contain properties and methods of Java code. A Java class usually has a context also and represents something real, like in this case, a book. This is how the structure of your project would look inside of a development integration environment, an IDE. You would have folders, packages, and classes. Now let's take a look at how it would look inside of your Windows file system. Now these structures can also be identified outside of your project in the Windows or Mac file system. So if you're on Windows system, you would have a folder that contains your project. Inside of that folder, you would see a folder called SRC or source followed by the subfolders main. Inside of the main, Java. Inside of the Java folder, a folder called com. Now notice that the folders in your project are the same as the folders in your Windows file system. And that the packages in your project are also represented by folders in your file system. com.thecodingzoo is represented as a subfolder called com under Java and another subfolder called the coding zoo under the subfolder com. Within the subfolder of the coding zoo, there would be a bookstore folder that represents the bookstore package in your project. There would be a books.java file that represents your Java class called books. 
This is how your code is stored inside of a Java project and on the file system. There are some caveats we won't go deep into now, such as a Java file might have more than one class, but this is enough to help us get started with modules. Before we look into modules, let's look at one other thing. Now eventually I will have to compile and package up my Java code so that it can be deployed to production or used by others. Basically, Java code is usually compiled and packaged up into a compressed file called a jar or a war. In this case, I might compile the code underneath the bookstore package and compress it into a file called bookstore.jar. A Java project can be configured with various types of build scripts such as Maven or Ant to build one jar per project, but we could also configure it to build multiple jars. For example, in my same project, I might have a package under com.thecodingzoo called utilities and I may package the code in the utilities package up into a jar called utilities.jar. There are no hardcore rules enforced by your IDE on how many jars I can create within a Java project. That can be up to your Maven or Ant script. This is how code is managed, stored, and packaged up for deployment in an application. Alright, so let's talk about modules. Modules is a new way to provide more context around separating and giving your code meaning one step above packages. A module is a new way of grouping packages instead of just using a project. So we went from a Java project that contains packages and those packages containing code to a Java project which contains modules and underneath those modules are packages and those packages contain code. Another thing to note also is a module is now one-to-one -one with a jar. If you define a module, that module has to be packaged in its own jar. So it's also a way of saying now that I want these group of packages to be in its own jar, to be in its own context and packaged in a jar by itself. So whereas implicitly we may have meant that before by using scripts, we can explicitly define that with a module definition now. So if you look at your project structure now, you'll see that we've gone from having a project and that project having a source folder with packages to having a project and that project having a module definition and the module definition has source folder with packages. So a module is defined right above your source folder. Your source folder contains your packages. Now how do you tell your Java project what your modules are? You do that by using a module info Java file. A module info, a module dash info Java file is placed in your root source folder. This is simply a, basically like a Java class. It's kind of like a package.info if you ever used one of those before. It just has the rules that def it just have the rules that define your module. So in order to use a module correctly you need to have a module dash info file in your source folder and you need to define the rules for that module now this video won't go too deep into that we'll cover that in upcoming lessons but just know that your new project structure has a java project underneath that the next level is a module folder and underneath that you have your source folders with packages and of course you have your module-info file that's new that needs to be defined. Now modules also modules also help to restrict what code can be accessed from where. That sounds familiar, right? Such as with the class file and packages. To understand modules better, you need to understand the visibility attributes that can be used in your code. Let's cover that real quick. A class file can have visibility attributes on the class definition, on a method, or on a property definition in the class file. Those visibility attributes can be private, protected, package scope, or public. If a class is marked public, it can be used by any other class anywhere. If a class is marked protected, it can only be used by subclasses, classes that extend it. If a class is marked as package scoped, it can only be used by other classes in the exact same package. Now that package may be defined in multiple jars and those multiple jars could share code. So it just has to be in the same package. Doesn't matter which jar that package definition is in. If a class is marked as private, it can only be used by other classes in the same class file. Now with modules, you have more flexibility to restrict usage. This is important because it provides more encapsulation. 
The more your code is available to unforeseen, unplanned clients, the harder it can be to change later. So we still have public, which is public to everyone, but now we have a module definition that can define public to friend modules only. So with your module definition, you can define classes in that module to be only available to specific modules, to friend modules. With this definition, you can define exactly what other modules may use a particular module. That's pretty neat. There's also another restriction that can be used. We can now say that all public classes in a given module are only usable by that module alone. That is also pretty cool. So potentially you could say in this module all the public classes are only available to the code in this module except for maybe one class. So then you only have one entry point into that module. One class that's available outside of that module and that class talks to all the other public classes in that module. Pretty neat. So you're kind of tightening down what can use what in your modules. You're providing encapsulation. This allows you to lock down and hide your code from unwanted usage. So what's changed? Let's summarize. So we went from having public, protected, package scope, and private to having public to everyone, public to friendly modules only, public to a given module, package, protected, and private. So we have two more types of visibility attributes that can be used by defining a module definition. What was the other change? The other change was also I can now with a module definition explicitly say all of this code in this package or this set of packages in this module has to be in the same jar. Has to be made a jar. Alright so hey that is Java 9 modules. I hope that makes sense. I hope that overview helps a little bit. So in future lessons, we'll probably go into the details of how to create the module info file. I know we didn't cover that in this video, but this video is meant to kind of more give you an overview of just what the modules kind of give you, what, what, what you gain from having modules. So hopefully the video was helpful in doing that. If you have any questions, leave a message below. I'll definitely get back to you. If you like this video, hey, click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed and you'd like to see more of our videos, hey, click that subscribe button. That really helps us to get the video out there, help us to get the channel out there so we can help others like you. So I just want to say, hey, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.